Okay, let's begin. Welcome to this session about component-driven closure script with Storybook. My name is David and I'm a developer and, li and I live and work in Stockholm, Sweden. And today I want to talk about Storybook, give a quick overview and also how we can use Storybook with closure script, writing stories and documentation. And I want to highlight some issues or some things that can pop up when we work with tools from the JavaScript ecosystem. But I want to begin with component-driven. What is that? Well, in short, it's about grouping relevant code into a component and combi combining components into features. And there's even a website for it, componentdriven.org. And here we can read, read about component-driven user interfaces and about creating components, combining components into features, combining features into pages or views, and combining views into a full-blown web app. So component-driven is about front-ends and user interfaces. And Storybook is a tool that can help us work component driven. So you, we write storage, stories which are isolated UIs where we can render, our com render and test our components. And Storybook is an open source tool, it's browser based and it's all about JavaScript. And that means that we can use it in ClojureScript too. And here's Storybook in action. To the left we have a bunch of stories and in the center, there is a canvas with a component. I have borrowed this component from Material UI. And with Storybook, I can experiment and try out how a component behaves by, by using uh, uh, the component, sorry, the Storybook toolbar, like scaling up, scaling down. And this is my favorite. I can try out different viewports to see how a component behaves in different kinds of devices. And there's also a documentation section. I'll come back to that uh, shortly. But there are more good stuff in the uh, toolbar. There's a grid. And there's also uh, a feature where you can measure your individual components. And you can also outline the different things within a component, different elements uh, and things like that. So I'm going to try to write my, one myself. And I think a good place to start is to browse the storybook documentation. So I'm going to navigate to, to writing stories. And here we can find, read about the, the building blocks of a storybook story. And it's basically made of two parts, a default export and the story itself. And the default is um, information about the story, metadata. And the story is where we actually, actually render the component that we want to build a story for. So I'm going to try to write this in Clojure script. So I'm going to begin with the default, adding a title. That. And this one uh, needs to be exported, so it, vis so it will be visible in, in Storybook. Next up is the story, and that is a function. Like that, and that one also needs to be exported. So if we see, uh, look, take, have a look in Storybook, boom. I guess I forgot one important thing, and that is uh, some JavaScript interrupts. So I have to convert my map into a JavaScript object. So now I have my hello world story, but it's empty because I don't have anything in my story function. So I'm thinking, I want to add, uh, I want to build a component. And I think I'm going to do that in line, in this file. In the real world, I would have uh, created a component in a separate namespace in the source folder and things like that. But for now, I'm, for now, I'm going to settle with this. So I'm going to do something simplistic, a string, maybe a header, like that. 
And the next thing is to actually add that component to my story function. And I'm using reagent. I'm building React component using reagent. And one important thing to think about is that the uh, reagent component need to be wrapped in the as element function of reagent. And there's my hello world component like that. I think I forgot one thing uh, in the metadata component, and I believe that is optional, but I also think that some third party tools rely on uh, that, that uh, key being set. So I'm, I better do that. And one thing to think about here is that you have to wrap this one in a reactify component from the reagent library. But this is start, starting to get some a bit too verbose. So I'm thinking about, I have actually created a helper function that will take care of all, of all that boilerplate because I don't want to have to repeat myself each time I'm going to read a, write a story. So I'm going to remove all these wrappers and let my, my helper take care of that. Let's have a quick look at the helper. So basically uh, the helper takes the map and selects keys to, to, to run that reagent function on. So I'm going to continue with my component to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm thinking about passing in a message instead of, instead of hard coding uh, th that text like that. So I'm going to, where I consume this component, I'm adding some text. Great. And I'm thinking about using a, a, a nice feature of Storybook called arguments. And arguments is something that will pop up in this Storybook UI. You can define defaults uh, to an argument like that. And Storybook will also send arguments to your stories so you can work with them programmatically and the args uh, param is a javascript object so we have to convert that one into a javascript uh, sorry closure script map so now i can extract the message key from my closure script params uh, uh, map and if we have a look at, at the ui something should pop up Right there, great. So I have a text box now, and that is uh, uh, my, my defined argument. So this means that I can experiment and try out components uh, in the Storybook UI. So I can experiment with different uh, amounts of uh, text to see how compo uh, my component behaves, like that. Great. You might have noticed the actions tab and actions are similar to controls but uh, so, uh, but there's one difference because with actions you can handle events so what i want to do is to continue working with my component i'm thinking about adding a button to it Like that, and some text to it. And what I want to do, I want to at, uh, attach an on click event handler. And I'm thinking about passing it into to the uh, component, just like with a message. Something like that. And I think that this time I'm going to expect a map and I'm going to destruct the keys like that. Great. So next up, to, to make this uh, working in, in Storybook, I'm going to use a feature called archetypes, and that is how you, we define actions. So I give it a name, and what Storybook will, will do, it will create an action, and an action is a function, it's a higher order function that will wrap our events. And uh, the actions will also be passed in as arguments. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pass in the entire params uh, map like that. And, and now we can see in the controls that, that I have an on click. And if I 
I think I'm going to scale up the text a bit like that. And if we switch to the Actions tab and click, you see that uh, I have a register click event and it's currently the entire event uh, displayed. But I'm going to do something more, a little bit more real world like and send some data through this event handler. I'm going to settle with the message. So let's click again. There. So that's my, my data passed in. I'm going to change the text to make sure that Storybook actually grabs the uh, current, uh, currently written text like that. Fantastic. Great. So that's actions. So let's continue with documentation. Um, I know that uh, quite a few use the Storybook for documenting components. And there's, uh, the current view is quite sparse, so I'm thinking about customizing it a bit. And that can be do done by adding data to, to the default export. So I'm going to define parameters and docs. And what I want to do next is to add a description to, to this component. So that text pops up in the UI. And it turns out that this property is actually, does actually support Markdown. So there's a couple of more properties that we can set, and that is the subtitle. Great. You might have noticed the show code um, uh, button. Currently that doesn't look too well because I think this is the one thing that doesn't work that well in the ClojureScript JavaScript interop. But it is possible to customize this uh, part too. So I'm going to like write a, a, a uh, add a string there instead. So it pops, turns out there. And what I have noticed is, is that if the string has a format that reminds of, uh, that looks like JSX or JavaScript, like that, Storybook will actually render it uh, nicely. But I'm going to do some, some something more closure like that. Works pretty well too. I want to show you one thing more. I think yeah, that it's a good idea to put the like code examples a little bit, little bit closer to, to where we have our uh, implementation. So as an alternative, we can actually grab the metadata from a component like this. And documentation is a feature that I personally doesn't, don't use that much, so I'm just going to remove this. But while I'm at it, I'm going to take this even further because I did some digging, digging in the uh, storybook uh, source code and I found out about the add-ons um, doc, uh, docs feature. So I'm going to import it and grab a bunch of components and by doing that I can I can customize the entire view documentation view I guess I had a typo there right so but and this that can be done by defining by writing a custom documentation component using these these uh, storybook react components so I'm going to add a title, subtitle, basically this, the similar thing that we see here, but I'm going to customize it a bit. I'll come back to primary and stories, what, what these are, but I want to add a title first. And perhaps a subtitle too. And a short description. And to be able to display this, I'm going to add a property to the default export. So it's the parameters, key, docs, and a page. And I'm going to set my custom uh, component like that. So, so now, now the view renders my custom component. And primary in stories is about the stories itself. So I'm going to add a variation of my, my story and it will list all existing stories. And I can also customize the title of, of, 
of the stories part two, like like that. So this is a way to to use storybook as a documentation. I'm going to reset all of this like that. Great. And I want to, yeah, I forgot one thing. There's uh, some documentation that you can read about, of course, in the storybook doc documentation. And there's also one thing called MDX. Uh, and that is something that I haven't tried yet. But if you do, please let me know how it goes and if it's useful for us uh, as closure script developers. So now I'm going to leave this uh, technical part a bit and reflect a bit on the actual usage of, of uh, Storybook. So I have uh, created a component, user card, with a text box and a button and then an avatar. And I can experiment how the different parts behaves. I'm getting a bit formal there uh, if I change the text. What if I would have a really long name? You know Pippi Longstocking? Uh, her, this is her Swedish, full Swedish name. And Longstrup, that's a really long name. So with this I can see how component behaves with unexpected uh, texts. But when I think about it and press the outline, uh, I can s clearly see that this component is made of several parts. And it, perhaps it should be several components too. So what I have done, I have extracted the avatar part. So I can still, so I can experiment with the avatar features in isolation. What would happen if my gravit gravatar link would be broken? Like that. It turns out that the material UI defaults are pretty good. So I'm going back to the user, the user card. There's a text box and I think there's some magical button appearing and disappearing too. So I'm going, I have actually extracted that one too into a component. So I can work with that one in isolation. And it turns out that this component has CSS that will right align the entire component. So that's why it uh, appears uh, to the right in this, in, in, also in Storybook. And that uh, strange uh, save button, I've ex actually extracted that one too, so I can experiment with the, with the fading in and fading out, the visual appearance of this uh, button. So coming back to my original component that is now a combination of several components, I can reflect on the actual usability. And it, even if it uh, was a good idea when I started developing, developing it, I realize now that making that button disappear when I lose focus on the text box is a bad idea. It's a really bad idea. So I'm thinking about this, uh, I can fix this. So I'm going to go to my new button component that I have extracted. Let's scale that text a bit, yeah. So I'm doing some CSS magic styling with the visibility. So I'm thinking about just deleting it like that. And you know, deleting code is my favorite part of software development. Usually less code is less problems. So while I'm here, I'm going to keep continue experiment with, with the, the UI of this button. What would happen if I increase the size to a medium, maybe even large? Great. And I cannot really remember what that variant uh, property is, is doing. So I think I'm going to delete it because I have to read, read, read up on the material UI a bit. Well, I guess maybe I should uh, undo that. And I think I can actually write contained to get a full background like that. Great. I think I want to size down the button to medium perhaps. Great. I'm happy. And let's make our linter CLJ condo happy too by doing that. Great. So, how does all of this work? Well, I'm going to fire up my, my tree view so you can see the source code. So I have my components in a component folder in the, in the main, in a main folder. 
And I have my stories in a stories folder. And I'm using Shadow CLJS. And I have an alias for my app and an alias for my stories. So what differs them are the targets. So the store, uh, story target is an MPN module. I've also defined a reg regex to be able to find uh, which parts of the co code is actually a story. Like that. And I've, in this case, I put all my stories in the public folder. Perhaps in the real world, maybe these, uh, th this code should be uh, somewhere else. So with this, uh, closure script is done. So it's time to hand it over to Storybook. And Storybook uses Webpack, and that is what I have been, have running, uh, been running all the time. So Webpack listens to code changes and will recompile things. So there's also a storybook folder with some configuration. And here I tell storybook where to find the, the compiled stories and also how to customize uh, storybook's webpack configuration. Because I use Material UI and AWS Amplify and there, between them there are some JavaScript quirks to, to, that needs to be taken care of. So, that can be done in uh, the webpack configuration. And this file is very important because Storybook uses Babel, but uh, we don't need Babel because ClojureScript has already, already taken care of all, all that for us. So I'm telling Storybook to just ignore uh, Babel. We can also set uh, different uh, uh, backgrounds in the Storybook UI itself like that. And if we have like global CSS or maybe even scripts, it's possible to inject them, inject them into the stories by adding it to, to the preview. And here I can customize the behavior of the storybook, maybe how the documentation is rendered and what kind of viewports are displayed and things like that. Well, that's it. So I've been covering storybook, how we can use it in closure script and how we can handle uh, quirks from the uh, JavaScript tooling ecosystem. Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope that you have learned something uh, useful and don't hesitate to contact me online, on, maybe on Twitter, on uh, GitHub or, or maybe even on uh, the Clojurian Slack. Thank you again for listening. Bye.